I think it makes us question whether segregation itself was really the cause of the feeling of inferiority in black children and in black people, as we, as we thought. It'll make us question also what I think was a naive belief that if we integrated with the whites, somehow they would stop seeing us as people of color or as black people. If we integrated with the whites, somehow the world would stop dividing itself up in terms of race. That somehow the world's division of itself in terms of African people and European people, black people and white people and so forth would somehow end. I think this study clearly implies then that this is not the case. I think it implies on a deeper level that inferiority in black people is a political and social necessity. I often in speaking to my colleagues and others who are interested in psychology and of course in the current book that I'm trying to develop now get across the idea of how black psychology differs, particularly black psychology at this time, differs from Eurocentric psychology. And I think one of the major ways that it differs from Eurocentric psychology is that when we talk about abnormality in the black personality, when we talk about feelings of inferiority in black people, feelings of self-hatred and self-alienation, feelings of incompetence, feelings of powerlessness and so forth that we hear a lot about. We must recognize that these feelings are a political and economic necessity. And we should start from that premise if we are to understand the psychology of black people. I often put it this way, in, often, in, in order for us to be in the state that we are in today as people, we have to be out of our minds. We literally have to be crazy. It is necessary for us to be crazy. It is necessary for us to be backwards. It is necessary for us to be maladjusted. It is necessary for us to be disunited. It is necessary for us to be self-hating. It is necessary for us to be uh, filled with an inferiority complex. In a world where the European is essentially about 10% of the world's population, if that 10% is to continue to rule over the other 90%, it must keep that 90% out of its mind. It must keep that 90% in a state of deception. It must keep that 90% uh, filled with a feeling of powerlessness and incompetence. If this 10% is to continue to consume more than 60% of the world's resources, if this 10% is to continue to rob African, Asian, and other nations of their material wealth, then it must keep those people in a state of maladjustment. And this implies then that no matter how much integration you may bring about, the feeling of inferiority must be a constant in the black personality. No matter how many people you run for president, no matter how many mayors you get elected, no matter how many people you get on the board of IBM and the others, the basic sense of inferiority the basic sense of dependency must remain a constant in the black mind. And I will indicate this, and I think this study, which occurred now some 40 years later, shows this to be the case. Dr. Clark shows surprise that after all of this time, this feeling is still there. I would not, and I don't think any student who's basically looked at the necessity of black people being out of their minds as being the foundation of European dominance would not be surprised. I think it was quite predictable. Remember, these children have this feeling of inferiority 
basically from the end of their second years. You can pick up this sense of inferiority as early as three, three and a half years old. So it starts very early. And I'm still working through my mind the implications of, of that kind of that finding. We are talking about preschool children, not only children that are in school, but children who, who are having this feeling prior to school. This would, of course, indicate that to a degree that our environment is saturated with racism through TV, through the various media, through the pictures I walls, through the unconscious and conscious state, and influence the child's behavior and attitude starting in the womb itself. And I often start my developmental classes not with the prenatal period and how egg meets sperm, but with why do you have children in the first place? Because the reasons you have children will influence their development. It will influence them from the time they're in your womb until, of course, the day they die upon this earth. It would indicate then that to a degree and in some way the black community itself has been induced in, in helping to bring about a feeling of inferiority in its children. To a good extent, it is not so much the actions of racism that destroy us, the discrimination by white folk and Europeans, the kind of hatred that they express toward us as people that destroys us and gives us an inferiority complex. It is to a good degree how we as people react to these actions. Whether we believe the propaganda or not, whether we believe what the European actually has said, we cannot often control the behavior of other people, but we do have a greater control over how we react to that behavior. And to a good extent, the challenge of an Afrocentric education is to educate us in our tendencies to react. To a good extent, it would mean that the actions of racism apparently have induced some of us to accept racist propaganda and to really believe it, to internalize it. Once we internalize the propaganda, then we become social agents for the racists themselves. And to a good extent, then, the black family, once it internalizes the propaganda of Eurocentric racist, becomes a social agent for the racist and begins to produce the kinds of children that the racists want from the time of conception onward. It becomes instructive, you see, to look at a family not as something that just raises children, but a family, to a good extent, is the social agent of the society. It produces the kinds of children that the society says it needs and wants. The family looks out at the opportunity structure, at its own social position. It looks out at what it uh, views as the future for its, its children, for its group, for its nation and it inculcates those views into its children and rears its children in terms of those views, sometimes consciously and sometimes unconsciously. And in that way, it begins to create the children for the society. In a heavily segregated society, for instance, if your black boy or girl would have said some years ago that they wanted to be president of the United States or that they were going to be president of the United States, how many of us, by being realistic, would have discouraged that view? You know, ain't no black man going to be this, or no black woman going to be that. Be real. And in the service of being real, by saying, well, I don't want him to be disappointed. I want to save him from racism and save him from the recognition one day that there are limitations to his aspirations, we quietly steer them toward a trade or a skill. Get this and get a job. So you, what, what's happening there? 
while it may have a realistic basis in a certain sort of way, you are also at the same time, though, creating the child's aspirations. You're also creating the child's motivations. You're creating the child's view of itself in line with the way the society is structured. A true Afrocentric family not only relates to his children in terms of reality, but it relates to his children in terms of idealism. It relates in the sense that it, there, it, there is a world that it is an African family and we as an African people want to bring about. While the black man may not be president of the United States, it does not mean that he cannot rule the world. The true Afrocentric family then not only raises its children in terms of the so-called social realities, because it recognizes that social realities are things that men create themselves. And therefore, it raises children to create a reality suitable to the advancement and development of black people. But an unconscious black family, an unconscious people, a people who've fallen victim to racism, a people who've fallen victim to a sense of inferiority, then will produce the kind of inferior children that the white society needs to continue its dominance in the world. And in this way, then, the black family and the black community and black leadership becomes allied with the dominant group and with the Eurocentric group. It is this kind of thing that we must come to, uh, to become conscious of and to defeat consciously.